Welcome back to Introduction to iOS Applications at SSFS. In this video, we're going to talk about saving data. We've created a lot of interesting apps so far, but the one thing we haven't been able to do yet is to save data between sessions. So on our apps currently, when we turn them off or exit them out, anything that we've done in that app is not saved. So we need to have a way to be able to have data persist from one session to the next. So Luckily, this is relatively simple to do with something called the Codable Protocol. And we haven't talked much about protocols, but all protocols are is a set of requirements or rules that your code must follow if you use it. If you don't add all the things the protocol says to do, you'll get an error. So if your code does all that, it is said to conform to that protocol. And again, a protocol usually doesn't make, tell you how to implement it, simply that you have to in some way. For example, I might have a, a polygon protocol that says I have to define an, an area, that anything that uses that protocol has to define an area. It doesn't say how I have to create the area, but I just need to do it somewhere in my code. Now, luckily, we don't have to worry too much about this because most of the Swift built-in types already implement the, or conform to the codable protocol, like string and int. So we should not have to do too much to make this work for us. And so a quick overview of how this works is that we, we, we're going to create an encoder object and a decoder object and then use those built-in methods to encode and then decode uh, information and then we'll work on saving it to our phone or iPad. Let's go ahead and see how that's going to work. So I have a playground open here and I have a very simple struct. Let's say I was going to make a to-do app where I would have a task and a due date. And I know that for due date, I really should have a, a date type, and Swift does have that. I'm just using a string to make it simple uh, for right now. So how do I make this conform to the codable protocol? Well, it's easy. I just add a colon after to do and type codable and hit enter. And that's it. Now, uh, my struct will conform to the codable protocol because string conforms to it. So let's go ahead and see if we can encode and decode some data. So I'm going to make a new instance of uh, a to-do object. So I'll say um, let new task equal to-do and let's say um, clean my room and the date is Saturday, the due date. So there we go, I have created a very simple new to-do item. So when I am encoding something, the first thing I need to do is create an encoder object. And there are different kinds of encoder objects, but what I'm going to use in this case is what's called a property list encoder. And a property list or a plist file is a very common way that iOS files store information. And the way they do it is in key value pairs, kind of like a dictionary. So you'll see in when you create an Xcode project, you will see a plist file as part of the root uh, files in that project. So let's go ahead and create a property list encoder. So I'm going to say let property list encoder. Notice that's a, a lowercase p equal capital P property list encoder, and I'll use parentheses to instantiate a new object. So that's it. I have created a, a new property list encoder. A property list encoder has many methods available to it, and the one we're going to use is called encode. So I'm going to write that what that looks like first and then talk about the structure of it. So I'm going to use um, optional binding, so I'll say if let, and then I'm going to give it a variable name. I'll call it encoded to do, because actually I'm creating an encoded version of my to do list. Equals try, and I'll get to that in a second. I'll use my property list encoder that I just created, and I'll and you can see that the method comes up is encode. Notice it has a throws here at the end. And we'll come back to this, but that's why I need to use the, the try. So again, we'll come back to that in a second. Notice that it is 
looking for some sort of encodable value. And actually, I'm going to use my new task. And then if that works, so if it's not nil, I'm going to print my encoded to do. So let's talk for a second about what this try is. So we've seen sometimes where we'll get errors when we try to run a certain function. Well, there are certain methods that are what are called throw. So they actually will give you more specific information about what type of error actually happened. And whenever you have a, a function that throws, you have to call it with a try. So again, it's we're using a try to return an optional uh, of that that list or that list of, of errors. And so we're just the way we're using it here, it's either going to fail or it's going to give us a, a encoded version of to do. I'm going to go ahead and click the play on this to see what happens. And you'll notice that it just says 86 bytes. And that's because the encoded version using the encode method just gives you how big it is, what the size of it is. Okay, so the important thing to remember here is I'm using the encode method on my value that I want to encode, and I use optional binding and the try method to make sure that it works. But I end up with an encoded version. So how do we decode it? Well, that's pretty simple too. I'm going to do it inside the same um, bracket structure so I have access to this encoded method. Well, if I used a property list encoder to encode it, it would stand to reason that I use a property list decoder to decode it, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to repeat these similar steps. Property list decoder equals property list decoder with parentheses. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do my optional binding if let, but I'll put decoded to do this time. And again, I'm going to use the try syntax, my property list decoder I just created. The decode method, notice I have two things now. I have a type, and it, one that conforms to the decoded pro, decodable protocol. Luckily, my to-do is a type that does that. And then the data that I want to decode. So the way I put the type is, the type is to-do, because that's the type of the struct. And then I'm going to use self because it's within these brackets to refer to it. And the other thing I want to do is pass it some data, and the data I'm going to use is the encoded to do. And then if that works, we'll print the decoded to do. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. And it's you can see here, it returns the oops to do task with the task clean my room and the due date Saturday. If I wanted to, I could do print decoded to do dot due date, and it would just print the due date. So that's the basics of encoding and decoding information, but we haven't yet written anything to our device so that it can be saved from time to time. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and work on how to do that.